Hey, what's up guys? I'm Joe from Workbench and this week we have a quick tutorial for you guys. I don't know if you've used back in the day Pete's plugins. Uh, there used to be this great halftone effect in there and it stopped development and I've even tried to recompile it but I couldn't really figure it out exactly. But I've come up with a quick and simple way to make a halftone effect in After Effects. So check it out. So what do you think? Not bad, right? Okay, first I'm gonna make a preset of this for you guys to download, so I just still wanna show you how it's done, but you don't have to like follow along or anything. All right, so let's see how it's done. All right, so I have my dots layer here and I have a background. If I turn this off, you can see it's actually fully transparent. It's not multiplied or anything. All right, so on here you can see we have quite the stack of elements here, and that actually means that you can change a lot of things and get different looks. All right, so let's turn all these off real quick other than the gradient ramp. And as you saw before, you can put this on footage or anything. I usually throw a tint and a levels on there just so I can get the footage dialed in the way I want it to look. But here we're just using a gradient ramp and it can go pretty much any direction you want it to. So if we go like this, the dots at the end will be all angled. All right, so if you noticed, it's actually uh, dark halftone dots where it's white on here. And that's why in here, when you look at it, you can actually see my face and stuff. Instead, normal halftone, would, this would all be black. But that's kind of boring in this shot, so I left it the way it was. Okay, so then we just throw a ball action over it and you can change the dot size and all sorts of different stuff on here. You can change your grid spacing. You can change the ball size, which actually lets you like mash this together at the end. So we can turn that on real quick and you can see kind of how that looks. So you can see you can get kind of that halftone look where the dots like melt together. Or you can go back here. I think it's at 50 here. It won't touch. You can also see that these kind of get like squarish over here and that's because of the way we're using to smooth this. They get a little crunchy around the edges because of how we've had to levels it and everything to get it transparent. But you can turn that off if you want, and it would look like this. So if you don't care that it has just a little bit of like a slightly aliased edge, then go with that. All right, so we're gonna turn all these off again. The next thing is an invert so that you get your black dots over here and white over here, which means that this is eventually gonna drop back out. And we do that because for some reason, the way the CC ball action does its thing is it's trying to make these 3D balls, right? So the highlight is actually gonna be in the center and the edges will be shadowed, but that screws it up for us because then we end up with rings instead of dots. But since it works out that way, once you invert it, we actually can get these dots to shrink instead of just staying this size. So the next thing we do is we throw levels on it so you can see that happen. And then we use a luma key to get rid of that. And then to smooth it back out, we do a Gaussian blur and then another levels and that gets rid of the crunchiness on the edges. And then we just put a fill on. Now if you want to get that like look where it's like ink spreading or something like that, you can play around with something like turbulent display so that this gets all weird, but I'm keeping it clean for this one. All right. So I hope you guys are as excited about this as I am because I actually have a project that a uh, client has a lot of halftone stuff and um, it was going to get a kind of a pain to have to drag all these halftone layers around and fit them in and resize them and all that kind of stuff. Now I can just draw my own halftone shapes. I don't really have one built for this kind of look, but I bet I could tweak it. I'm sure you can make some with shape layers and repeaters, but uh, that's not as easy as drawing a gradient. All right, guys, I am Joe from Workbench. If you want to help support what I do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. The link is below. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And I make weekly videos. So if you want to be notified of that, hit subscribe. Also, make sure that you check out workbench.tv for more great content. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.